September, the Comedy Central roast aired, yeah. um, and arg- you were arguably one of the first Comedy Central roastees that wasn't past their prime, but are still in their prime. So tell us a little bit about that was like what that was like. Um, uh, was there a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, or was it just sort of, hey, do you want to do this, and you took the offer? Yeah, um, <clears throat> that's a good question. I um, was asked by Comedy Central to do it. What they said to me was that they wanted the, the I had, I'd, never, I'd never seen any of the roasts. I didn't see Charlie Sheen, I didn't see Roseanne Barr, I didn't see um, the Baywatch woman, Pam, Pam Anderson. Mm-hmm. Um, I had heard that they were kind of cruel. They just want to rip into these people, right? I mean, it's, it sounds like it could get really brutal. And what they said to me was, we want the roast to go back to the traditional roast when, um, when it was like the Rat Pack, Dean Martin and Sinatra, you know, uh, a bunch of friends kind of, you know, making fun of each other, having yeah. a good time, rather than some sort of brutal, you know, uh, onslaught uh, against these weird pop cultural, you know, mm-hmm. people. And so um, I said, okay, that sounds interesting. So, and I said, um, if. Seth Rogen is the roast master. I'm down. I'll do whatever. I don't care. Because I know that there's nobody with a better sense of comedy than Seth Rogen. And that, um, and he's also somebody that just understands me or works well with me. So what, even if he is as harsh as possible, there's no way it's going to be bad. If I'm interested in something... I can handle most worst outcomes because I got, you know, I did the, I hosted the Oscars. I got such horrible criticism of that. I kind of feel like I can handle anything now. So it's like, if I believe in something or if, if something seems kind of interesting, I'll, you know, I'll try it. I'm not afraid of of failure. So it was about two, two and a half hours of, of jokes. And I, I thought, it was going to be two hours worth of them making fun of only me. But they do all the people on the dais. Yeah, and right before we went on, I was backstage with Seth, and he said to me, um, all right, well, uh, just get ready. There's going to be uh, a lot of gay jokes about you. And I was like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> and then I was like, all right, cool. He's like, and Jonah's getting a lot of fat jokes. And I was like, what do you mean he's getting a lot of fat jokes? What are you talking about? It's like, well, everybody's, I've, I've heard kind of what people are going to say and they're going to make fun of his weight. And uh, that was the first I was like, you're going to make fun of Jonah? He's like, yeah, <laughs> we're making fun of everybody. And I was <laughs> like, and so it was like, as, as, as harsh as it could get up there, it was all like a relief because it was like, I was facing one eighth of what I thought I was going to face. And the things that they made fun of uh, on, of me were like <laughs> nothing. Like I got off so easy. And the fact that they they agreed to do it, that Jonah agreed to do it, that you know Bill Hader and Andy Samberg and um, I, those are the ones I asked. I asked Andy, Bill, Seth, and and Jonah. And then the others were either asked by Comedy Central or, or by Seth. So Aziz and Sarah Silverman were kind of brought on by Seth, and and then Jeff Ross is just. <laughs> Comedy Central's like troll <laughs> or <year>. troll <laughs> guy, <laughs> and uh, um, and so I was so grateful to my friends to for doing that, knowing that they were going to get made fun of, and 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 particular Jonah because he's a guy who's very smart, very talented, but you know I think it's you know he's one of these people that that has kind of chafed against being in the public eye, and he and he can be very defensive about how people, you know, talk about him or think about him. And so the fact that he put himself in that position to be made fun of in that, you know, to that extent um, showed that he, you know, he was a real true friend. And, um, and I had no idea that I was asking him to do that. I think I even say it in the roast, like, I can't believe <laughs> that you did this and for me. And, um, and I, think it was, I think it was also very good for him. Because it was like, 
everything that he had feared, all that public embarrassment and, and criticism that he feared and had been trying to protect himself against for years, came at him all at once. And he saw that he didn't die, that he's okay. And I, I think it made him a, a much better person. Um, talked a little bit earlier about how after the Oscars you received a lot of criticism. And it seems like everything you do, there's always something in the tabloids about it. There's always some sort of critique, whether it be good or bad. Do you, do you feel like you're misunderstood by the pu in, in the public eye, that people just don't understand you as an actor, as an artist, as a, just a person in general? I don't really need to, I don't feel like this great need to be understood. I don't, I don't, I don't really care. You know, I've, I've achieved, um, I've achieved all my dreams. You know, if I can think back to when I was at Pali, it was like, okay, James, if you could do anything, what would it be? And I'd say, well, I wish I could write a book and be an actor in some great movies and direct um, some great movies and do art. Well, that's what I do. So, like, you know, that's enough. I don't, you know, if, and there are plenty of, of people that do understand me and take me seriously. You know, I have, uh, I get to make movies, you know, with great people based on, you know, my favorite books. Um, I have a great gallery, the Pace Gallery, to, you know, kind of support my art. I get all the books I want published. So, you know, there are enough outlets and people that do take it seriously enough to you know let me do it that if there's a you know a faction that you know in some sense willfully misunderstands me you know what I mean like mm -hmm. I come from the reason you, you say like oh there's usually you know something written up about whatever I do I mean that's just sort of the phenomenon around me now um, for good or bad mm -hmm. But it's because I come from the film world. I started in the commercial film world. That's, that's a very kind of poppy world. And so when I go to these other more, you know, a little more kind of serious or artsy or esoteric worlds, like the liter you know, literary world or the art world, and the critics from the pop culture critics from this world try to follow me there and kind of comment on what I'm doing, the most they can say is like, oh, he's a weirdo, or, you know, it's just, you know, oh, that's so easy, you know, appropriation art is so easy, or, you know, they just, they don't really understand the traditions in these other things, and so it, they can just say, oh, he's a dilettante, or he's stupid, or whatever. 